Okay, so I'm in Revit Architecture and you've seen that I have a plan as to how I'm going to go about creating the adaptive component that I want to have for a step foundation. So what I'm going to do first of all is go to the application menu and say that I want to create a new, and it's a, a conceptual mass. The type of conceptual mass it is, is the adaptive component. I can open that up. I just so that we're all looking at exactly the same thing, I'm going to have you click on reference level and I'm rolling forward. Um, and what I want you to do is just draw a rectangle that's about two feet by two feet. Oops, that's, that's kind of approximate. Okay, and, I'm, and I mean about two feet by two. I'm not being specific. I'm just moving it and placing it around there. So that's that's about the size of the 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 sort of the 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 footing that I want to create, the step footing that I want to create. And so what I'm going to do is the the steps would be that I'm going to create the uh, points and turn them into adaptive points. Now the, the points are if you go to point element and just make sure that this up here is saying that your placement is on level reference plane. The point is uh, a host object, kind of like a wall is a host object for a window. Uh, adaptive point is the host object for the rigging that you want to place on it. But these are not adaptive points. Adaptive points have three planes associated with them and the way that you convert these to adaptive points is to select them and use the option up here that says make adaptive. Now also the other thing I want to point out is they all have a number in, in and they're numbered according to the the order in which they were placed so I did go in and say clockwise one two three and four um, I didn't go one, two, and three and four. I went clockwise around the the clockwise around the center of my my object, the center of my object, because these reference planes say they define the origin. So my cursor will be at that point when I bring the object into a project. I'm going to look at it in 3D. So I'm going to go to the 3D view, or I could have got, done the same thing up here. I'll roll forward a bit to look at it. Um, I want to place, to make my rigging, I want to place a reference point exactly on top of the existing points, but it's very important that I tell it that the plane that I'm placing it on, if I tab, is that horizontal plane. I'm using the tab key to indicate to you which plane I'm placing it on because the reference point will have a, a property called offset that will let me set a distance that that reference point is away from the plane that I placed it on. So by, by doing this where I go, that's the plane that I'm drafting on, here's the point and I'm placing it right on there. I'm ensuring that I'll be able to take that reference point and offset it at a certain distance above the plane that I placed it on. Now the other way of doing that would be to say I want to set that plane as active and then I want to place a point on it. Right, so I can say set that plane as active, place the point on here. And I'll do just the last one, set that plane as active, this point on here. So I've actually got eight points in my, my family at the moment. I'm going to drag around to select all the geometry, go to the filter option, turn off the option that says adaptive points, so that all I've got selected is the reference points. And you'll see in the properties palette, if you don't see the properties palette, click on that icon. But if I scroll down here, you'll see it says offset zero. So if I were to come in and say offset one foot and click apply, you see what happens is that these points should move up. And you can think of this as flexing the model. This is a way of me 
changing a value and then seeing that I actually get the anticipated results in, in here. But I don't want um, the user to have to come back into a family to change the offset distance for what will be the, the thickness of the step in the foundation. So what I want to do is create a parameter, a depth parameter that I can apply to all four of those points. So one way to do that is to window around here and just pick the reference points. And you see up here it says I've got four reference points and the offset value is one foot. But if I click on this button to the right of the field, I can go in here and say add a parameter that I'm going to call depth. I'll say it's a type parameter and I can say OK. And this is going to let me give the user choices where he can bring in the footing that I'm creating, the step footing that I'm creating, um, but the user will be presented with a choice of different types. So if just to show you how the, it's created, if I go up here to the family types, watch the, the watch what happens to the points in the the project down here. If I say give me a, a new parameter called um, 12 inches, this will be part of my family, and it's got a 12 inch depth, then you're not going to see a change when I click apply. But if I say give me a new type for the footing, and I'm going to call this 18 inches, and I'll change the value. The name's 18 inches, and the value is going to be 18 inches. Watch what happens to the points that are going to be part of our rigging when I click Apply. You see them move up. And if I say, give me one last type, which I'm going to call 24 inches, and give a value of 24 inches, then when I click Apply, that's driving the geometry. So this, that's called flexing the model, where you can see that the, the, the different type parameter is giving the user three, three choices. I'm almost finished with the rigging. The next thing that I want to introduce is um, 3D snapping. So if, and, and also uh, kind of a best practice is that when you're drafting these uh, rigs, it's probably best to use reference lines because they will stay visible as you draft. Um, as opposed to model lines, which will be consumed by the form that you create, and then you, then you won't be able to uh, edit them without going inside the form. But it just makes it easier if you have reference lines rather than model lines. So what I'm doing now is I'm turning on the 3D snap, and I'm in the reference line command here. And what I'm, all I want to do is create a, a closed loop between the four points at the top of my footing and then hit the escape key and then um, actually relatively new if, if I hit the escape key I'm back in the same command that I was in previously so this is me starting to draft again that was kind of a new addition in 2011 I'm placing that bottom closed loop and escape and now what I want to do I'll hit escape one more time to just get out of the command altogether um, or I could have clicked modify. <coughs> uh, if I if I click on the chain of lines on the top of my model and then I hold the control key, pick the chain of lines on the bottom, I can now go up to the create form and the geometry that I've selected will imply for Revit what it is that's being created. So it knows that it's creating a form that's really blending between those two two uh, closed loops that I had identified for. And just to confirm that this is working the way that I want, I can go up here and say, what if I said 12 inch? So the, the flesh that I put on top of the rigging is now responding in the same way as the rigging was before. One last thing I want to do here, and it's important, is that I'm going to turn the model a little bit 
by the way if you select on something that will make sure that when you turn it the the center of orbit is the is the center of the object that you've selected so what I can do is, is turn this I'm using the shift key and turning and then what I'm going to do is just drag around here select a bunch of items but filter out just the adaptive points and on the properties of those points you see it says adaptive points for I'm going to come down to the orientation and I'll show a bit more of this later but for the moment what I want you to do is change this to say that the the orientation should be vertical in the family so that the uh, the uh, the reference points that that are up here it'll assume that they'll be vertical directly above the points that I've created um, I might have one other thing to do here is because of scheduling and things like that um, this at the moment is kind of regarded as a category of a generic model so up here I'm going to come down and say why don't you uh, think of that as being a structural foundation okay. and I'll leave it at that I'm going to show you about materials in a set, uh, uh, when we finish the model but let's go ahead and place this adaptive component inside a family so I want you to open I'm going to save this let's do file save as the family and I'm pointing to my exercises folder adaptive components class and let's call and this is under uh, exercise uh, sorry this is under the let's call this um, my footing step the old one. Okay, now I want to bring this into an actual project. So if I go here and say open and I look at the folders and I look in adaptive components and class, I want you to open the the the, the file called classroom finished. And here is the a view of the classroom with the step foundation. Just let me make sure down here you see that there's under structural there's nothing that says adaptive components. So if you if you hold the control and tab key, that's how you switch between views and your in projects that you that you have open. So what I want you to do is make sure that you're back in the adaptive component family which you saved and gave a name and now you're saying load it into the project and which one is the one called, if there's more than one project open you'll get a list. If you only have one it'll put it in the one that's open. So I want you to pick classroom finished and now that's actually brought it into the project it appears in the project browser so down under here there's adaptive component my footing step there's the types that you created and now you're almost ready to place them into your your into the model but you can't just take an adaptive component and bring it into the project right you get this warning message so what you do is you can only place them inside a in place mass so I'm going to go to here and say let's create an in-place mass. It tells me that it's turning on the display of uh, of uh, mass elements. And what I'll do is call this, I'll, I'll give it a name so it's a bit more meaningful, call it footing. And I'm ready now to bring these in. So I'm going to take the 12 inch. Um, I've got this as wireframe. It's a little easier to see what I'm doing. So now remember that I, the way that I drew this. So if I go... Uh, if I'm going to do this, I think I'll go anti-clockwise here. I'm going to go, there's one point, there's another, there's the third, and there's the fourth. Or down here, first point, second point, third point, fourth point. Now don't worry about the fact that if they, if they appear to come in backwards because of the Z direction of your your uh, adaptive component because you can always pick it and you can say flip it to, to turn it the other direction right so you can flip on or flip off like that and then I'm going to say finish the mass 
I think I'll, I'll stop this at, one, at this point. Um,